Hey, this is John Orberg, and we're on the road to Christmas. We are walking through the Advent season, thinking together about radical acceptance, about how the reason that God sent Jesus was he wanted you to know that you are dearly loved. You and I are highly favored. God accepts us. For those who are in Christ, there is no condemnation. And then at the same time, we are to live with an open heart, with a spirit of willingness, of surrender to God, of saying yes. No matter how many promises God has made, they are all yes in Jesus Christ. And we are to say yes, amen, back to God. So we're learning about that every day. I want you to start right now by thinking about some area in your life where it's hard to say yes, some area where it's difficult for you to offer wholehearted acceptance to reality, to God, might be another person, might be an emotion that you're pushing back on, might be a condition or experience part of your life where you just don't want to be here. And I want to offer today a scale of acceptance. This I mentioned this from Rick Blackman and his wife, Sherry. I'll talk with Rick about it a little bit later on when we're going through this. But um, you might think about it this way. This is a highly technically created chart. Hopefully you can read this. And uh, from the bottom up, at the lowest level, is when I just simply condemn or utterly reject this person, this situation, this emotion, this part of myself. And then as I move up the scale of acceptance, it goes next to resist. And here, I'm no longer trying to deny it, but I don't want it, and my emotional response against it leaks out quite a bit. And then uh, the middle zone right there is to tolerate. Now, at this point, I realize that this is a part of my life, and so I am now open to it. And then up from there, the next level is to accept. I accept this person or this feeling or this emotion or this situation. Uh, I actually have some positive emotion towards it. And then at the top level is uh, I embrace. I wholeheartedly put my arms around. This is the reality in which I live. So as kind of an experiment today, I want you to think about some person. You don't have to tell the person or some situation or some emotion that's difficult for you and ask, how do you move up the scale of acceptance? Now, as a story from the Advent season, I want to walk through the first chapter of Luke because, interestingly enough, there's a way of reading the story of Mary's journey where she actually walks through all five of these levels of acceptance. Initially, as we talked about when we kicked off this journey, the angel Gabriel comes to Mary and has uh, these words, Greetings, you who are highly favored, the Lord is with you. But initially, even though those words look so good to us, they are not received positively by Mary, and so we're told that she is greatly troubled. Luke uses a version of a verb here, the Greek verb terasso, that Jesus would use later on when he would say, don't let your hearts be troubled, but then he uses it to describe himself when he's facing the cross. He says, now my soul is troubled to the point of anguish, to the point of death. And so Jesus himself is going to have to go through this scale of acceptance, just as his mom did at the very beginning. And what she knows initially is that she's being greeting, greeted with words that were given to the great prophets, um, people of God in the Old Testament, Moses, Gideon, Jeremiah. Interestingly, when they came to those people, none of them embraced those words. We think of being called by God as this very romantic, wonderful experience. But it was not experienced that way by the people who actually went through it. And what they were generally told that a calling was God would be with them and would give them the strength to bear what they would need to bear that they didn't want to bear. And Mary understands what, that's what's happening. What's interesting now with the coming of Jesus and the opening of the kingdom of God, life with God to all human beings radically in him, the radical acceptance God is going to offer human beings. Now, as far as I know, for the first time in sacred scripture, this calling is given to a woman, not a man, a young girl. And initially she doesn't want it. She wonders what kind of greeting this could be. The angel tells her that she is going to be a mom, although she has not known a man. And then she kind of pushes back on this. How will this be since I am a virgin? At this point, she's not condemning. She's not rejecting it outright, but she doesn't want it. 
and the angel answers, here's how it's going to happen. And Mary goes on to uh, toleration. I am the Lord's servant. May it be to me according to your word. But she doesn't stop there. Immediately goes on to say, at that time, Mary got ready and hurried to a town in the hill country of Judea, where she greeted her relative Elizabeth, who knew this story. And now Mary has moved to a positive acceptance of what is happening. This is sometimes called willingness of the feet, where even though things may be a little bit mixed for you emotionally, you actually act uh, uh, in a way that's congruent with whatever your situation, with that relationship, with that circumstance. And then, of course, she goes on in a couple of verses from here to one of the great songs in all of human literature that we'll be looking at more as we go through Advent. It's sometimes called the Magnificat because she says, my soul magnifies, glorifies, praises the Lord. My spirit rejoices in God, my Savior, for he has been mindful. We'll talk about mindfulness too, of the humble state of his service. Now she is wholeheartedly embracing the calling that God has on her life to be the one through whom the Messiah would enter into the life of Israel. So what I want to invite you to do today as we think about Advent and this wonderful promise now, the Lord is with you, you are accepted by God is, you think about that situation, that circumstance, that emotion, that relationship that is really difficult or painful for you. Where is it on the scale of acceptance? I remember many years ago talking to a good friend of mine about a parent who um, was so distraught by their child that uh, they really staked their well-being on their child's choices. And my friend said about his dad, because this one child didn't do and live the way that the dad wanted him to, he never recovered. And I realized at that time, different circumstances, I was in danger of that same response. And that is to simply reject, condemn either another person or the circumstance in which I find myself. And I, you don't want to live in a spirit of condemnation or rejection of our one and only shot at life this day. So then the next step up is to move to a place where uh, at least uh, I am open, however grudgingly, to reality, to this relationship. At least I'm moving away from a spirit of condemnation and rejection. I remember Lou Smeads writing about a parent one time who was disappointed in his daughter. She was often depressed. And he said to Lou, I realize what I need to do is I need to forgive my daughter. And he said, no, you forgive someone when they have done something to wound you that is badly motivated. What you need to do is accept your daughter. You need to realize that you got to give up the child that you dreamed of having and recognize this is the child that you actually have. And so now that involves a movement from uh, resisting, grudging, to tolerance, to genuine openness, to saying, now this is my life. This is where I find myself. Somebody offered a really interesting metaphor around this. If you're normally in a hole someplace, you try to resist it and you try to struggle to make your way out. But if you're in quicksand, that's not a good idea. If you're in quicksand and you're on two feet and you take the weight off of one foot to struggle to get it up, all of your weight doubles now on the other foot. And because there is nothing solid underneath you, you will sink yourself. When it comes to quicksand, if you want to get out of the mud, you've got to get into the mud. You've got to get with the mud. You actually have to spread your weight of your whole body. It's counterintuitive. It's paradoxical. Uh, as widely as you can on that quicksand and it will be able to bear you if you trust every bit of yourself to it then you might be able to roll over and and there is a strange spiritual reality that's very much like that if I willfully struggle to say I don't want to be here I don't want this emotion I want to make this person change almost always makes it worse but instead, if I'm able to say, I am the Lord's servant, may it be to me, then I'm able to move now from toleration to acceptance, where I actually 
positively welcome this circumstance, this emotion into my life. Now, we'll talk about what that's not. That doesn't mean that you be passive. Uh, I called earlier today. I, I joined a Zoom membership for our family. We have one little member of our family that was in town, and I wanted to take them to a zoo. And I wasn't able to get a reservation today. And so I called and talked to somebody, and they said, well, you just recently joined. Our computer system isn't set up for it right now. So you'll have to try to come in a few more days. Now, uh, this little one wasn't going to be in town in a couple more days. So I was not about to just passively say, okay, God, your will be done. I said, no, no, no. I think we could do better than that. And tried to be in touch with God to be connected and empathic and friendly, but also creative and also insistent. And we were able to get to the other side. So acceptance is not the same thing as passivity. It doesn't mean if somebody is abusing me, I allow them to continue to go do this. It means I recognize this is my reality. And I ask God, God, will you help me to deal and cope with it? And then that moves me ultimately to embrace. And that magnificent, my soul magnifies the Lord. I rejoice because God is with me. So today, where are you with that relationship, in that circumstance, that emotion, that depression, that anxiety? Where are you on that scale of acceptance? How do I move up one level? God, help me to do this. That's the task today on our journey to Christmas in Jesus. And God will be with you. Hey, we're so glad you're here. More than a video to watch, we hope this is a community you can engage with. So add your voice to the comments. You can subscribe to our YouTube channel, follow us on Instagram, or join our Facebook group, becomenew.me. We'll be posting daily questions and resources for you to engage with. And if you want real-time text alerts, you can text the word become to the number 56525. So take a step, Get connected, and we'll see you next time.